It's about you. You don't need the niche down because you are the brand. So showing who you are is what actually makes you the money. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Yes, yes. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for being here today. My name is Sarah Delancic, in case you didn't know. And we are going to keep it real today. We are going to talk about something I'm very passionate about by some with someone who is doing uh, this at a very high level. And I'm super passionate about this topic because it is part of my follow-up strategy and I've been calling it the future of follow-up for two years now. And I was on um, Jeff Bitzer's Lab Coat Agents podcast about a month ago. And he goes, Sarah, this is not the future of follow-up. This is now right? This is now. So um, video, YouTube channels, creating authority and um, recognition through YouTube. And that's what we're going to be talking about with somebody who's doing this at a super high level. And he's a friend of mine, also happens to be in my market, Mr. Austin Robertson. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Sarah. Yes. Um, so we're going to talk about how, well, we, we go we go way back um, but you weren't living here in Washington state when I first got introduced to you, but you came here and like pretty much all the people you knew were like solely real estate agents. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Yeah. Literally knew nobody here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so you moved here and this was how long ago? How long ago did you move? Uh, three years, three years ago. And where did you move from? Uh, Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. So m like Midwest Missouri. Was, all right. Okay. And then uh, you moved here and you had no sphere of influence. And so you built the number one ranked YouTube channel in a very competitive market in Tacoma, Washington. Yeah. Yeah. I really didn't have many options. You know, I, I came out here and put my head down and um, went to work beating the phones like every new agent did. And with this really weird, um, I'm going to call it an ego trip, even though like I, I mean it in a different way. And what I mean by that is we had a very successful team in the Midwest. And when we came out of here, yeah, you know, I still carried all of those skills. Like I didn't lose those skills, but nobody knew who I was. And there was this really weird period of time that like I was in this delusional space for a little bit. And then it all of a sudden hit me. And, uh, I went into like, honestly, like a pretty scary depression for about 90 days. And then after that, you know, um, finally something in my head was like, bro, you've got kids and a wife to take care of. Like you've got to get this together. Mm -hmm. So we started the search for, okay, well, what does business look like when you know, no one, mm -hmm. and, um, relocating out here was that absolute awful experience. Um, I'm aware. So. <laughs> And so that was kind of one of the things my wife is like, Hey, you should, you know, I dabbled in YouTube in the Midwest and she was like, you should get back into this and you should just make videos on the things that were hard for us. And, uh, and in all honesty, like I didn't think that shit would ever work. Like, Oh, sorry. I'm supposed to say bad words. I say bad words. I'm sorry. Um, but the adults do. Just okay, okay. Okay. But like, I didn't know it would work. Like my thought was like, maybe this will give me some clout. Maybe when I walk into a listing appointment and they're like, oh my God, this guy's got 400 videos on our town. They would, you know, view me as an authority. I didn't know that it would turn into like the lead gen machine that it has. I didn't know that it would carry over into Google. Um, I didn't know my phone would ring every day because of it. So it's been a pretty crazy experience. Oh my gosh. See, this is, I love this. So you already told us what motivated you to get up off your ass and do it and like where you were at with everything and, and all the difficulties and challenges that you experienced by making that transition it's almost like everything that you experienced now you knew how to talk about it and how to overcome those challenges when moving to this area and i think that's what makes it really unique um but at the same time your youtube channel just is incredibly like eye-catching it's relatable 
you're real, you're authentic. And that's what I love about it. And that's why like anytime for those that don't know, I own an ISA company and we're a boutique ISA company. And we work exclusively with agents who you have YouTube channels because it's all part of our follow-up technique. So people are always asking to sign up with us without YouTube channels. And so I'm constantly sending out Austin YouTube channel as an example of what can be done here. So most of the time that I host these, I have like a whole presentation. This time I wanted to do this really off the cuff. I want people to ask questions and I really want to get into like how you did this. What are you using to do this? And really quickly, I'm going to share my screen and show you guys what his YouTube channel looks like. And it's called, well, now it's called the original living in Tacoma, Washington, right? So yeah, I had a, I had another guy end up um, trying to create another channel with the exact same name. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot you can do about that with YouTube. Um, and so we just, you know, crush them all on uh, the SEO and everything else. And he's they've since quit creating content. But I just thought, hey, I'm going to leave that there. You know, it shows that, hey, I'm the, I'm the first one. And um, it, it seems to be working just fine. Yeah, it says something. So did I share the right screen? Because for some reason, a little green thing around my screen is not. Do you see I your mean, YouTube channel? If you're looking for me, then yeah, you've got it. Okay, good. All right. So this is this is what... Okay, so my follow-up techniques are based off of these amazing thumbnails that he creates, which even if somebody who's buying or selling doesn't click on this... And like, first of all, we, we can go down the whole rabbit hole of just... If you're moving to a new area, you're going to Google what's it like to live in Tacoma, Washington, right? And that's where he comes up. But these are the key to it because it pops up as a preview if you text this to someone which i love so there's that and then you can see here he's got like three thousand views um three thousand views and these are things that he's sharing like what i wish i knew when i moved to tacoma that's a really catchy topic because it's gonna grab people so how did you come up with a lot of these topics i mean you already kind of told us that you you face some challenges but what about other ones yeah i mean a, a lot of them have just been um like a lot of more pain points for me. And I have, I still have an ongoing list inside my phone in my notes of just like 300 titles. And then the next thing too, is it actually gets easier as you do business from YouTube because each client has, you know, uh, a special set of needs or they run into a problem during the process or they ask you a question. And what I do is I just continuously have them notes app on my phone and I'll get asked a question and I will write down whatever they're bringing to me and then be like, okay, why well, do you address this now? Because somebody else has just talked about this or brought That's this awesome. to my and, and so it's not just a curated, let me get views. It's I'm getting this actual information from the clients now, which yeah. is it's so much better. Like it's super easy to walk around town and show you the city. It's super easy to do a pros and cons video. Um, but as you get the information from the actual people relocating, you get to dive deeper on what's important to your perfect client avatar. And there you go. We dial down into who our perfect client is. The more we get more of the perfect clients and the more we track the perfect clients. So that's a perfect segue into like how much. Well, first of all, you've been doing this for what? How long? How long have you been creating uh, this? We're, we're just wrapping year two. Okay. Yeah, I thought I, I, I was pretty sure it was under two years. Okay, and then how many how many subscribers and views were you getting on on average in the first like six months? Let's just go with six months. But I don't know the six months. I can tell you the first year okay. uh, because like the worst because now I'm watching people that are like in like YouTube groups and stuff, and they're complaining about their subscribers, and I'm like, God, I was really bad. But I ended up with like 156 subscribers at the end of my first year, like putting out content, doing live shows. Like it just wasn't catching. We were hitting a wall. Yeah. Is there something, um, so I have, I have some clients right now that are doing this and they didn't name their channel the right way so that they wouldn't show up in the algorithms or they didn't put the right tags. Was there something like that that you were missing or was it just like once you broke through the wall, then it was like, bam. You know, on the, on the name portion, I've noticed that my, through SEO, where I'm ranking on Google, where I'm ranking in most places, it's not the name of my channel. It's more okay. of the content. Um, I happened to pick the name that I did, and uh, 
you know, I, I had a living in Springfield, Missouri back in the day. So it was just kind of what I went with, with this channel. And there's been a big trend of the living in moving to, it was like, it's yeah. just everybody kind of does it. So I, I actually think naming it niching down too much is maybe nowadays a little differently. I might change if I had done it differently now, I might change it. Um, what I will tell you is, yeah, no one's, no one's searching us Robertson, but they are searching like living in Tacoma. So there's an advantage there, but you know, I think it doesn't sound sexy, unfortunately, but I think, you know, really what changed is just the fact that we just kept going. Yeah. We yeah. kept going. We kept hammering on the same major keywords. Um, and we just kept creating consistent, consistent, consistent. And what I did was before I kind of took the, decided to do this, I'd committed to three years of doing it. Like I thought, you know, okay, if we do a video or two a week, you know, can I manage that for a few years? Worst case scenario, again, it builds a big library that shows, Hey, I'm the, the local expert. Um, and you know, yeah. you know, so we committed to it and it was just like, you know, for seven months, no one called us nothing. And then on month seven, some random UFO rings and this girl's like, Hey, you know, I'm married to a guy who's a sailor at Riverton. I live in New Mexico. I design the brains for self-driving cars. Can you help me move up there? And I, oh. I like double checked my phone to make sure it wasn't a prank. Um, you know, like <laughs> I everything, that. like I honestly just, I, if you, <laughs> y'all, if you want to see somebody that thought YouTube wouldn't work, I'm like the guy. Um, and that's, that's good to know. That's yeah. good to know. <laughs> and then since then, you know, we've been dialing it in. Um, we've cranked out, you know, pretty much two videos a week, every week. We were starting doing a live show this year. Um, so it's, it's just been, I think, a matter of consistency and getting over those hurdles. What I'll notice, if you go to your market, wherever you at, wherever you're at, type in living in, like moving to blank, find some of these creators. What you'll notice is that real estate agents tend to get really hot and heavy if, about things for a short time and they fly out. So you might, you know, look up, you know, uh, living in, I don't know, Galveston, Texas. Okay. And there might be a thousand videos there. But if you go look at those creators, chances are they created videos for about 90 days mm -hmm. and they quit mm -hmm. and they touched it again. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is, that's the three year commitment. I'm like, that's hard for any agent to do, but to give some background, you were a coach. Like I used to sell real estate coaching. You were a coach. And so you have a high, you know, like, and you were very successful in Springfield and, and you came here with just zero SOI and rebuilt your team and rebuilt your authority and your recognition in this area, which is, which is a much harder, I mean, I've never been to Springfield, but I imagine it would be much harder in Tacoma because if people think of Washington state, it's like Seattle, Tacoma, Spokane. So you're talking about like one of those one of those cities that people, you know, there's probably 10,000 realtors just in like a 10 mile radius kind of thing, which is insane. I'm, I know I'm not, let's not do the math. The math isn't mapping, but whatever. It'll make, you, it'll make you, it'll make you feel a little intimidated. Don't look at how many agents there are. <laughs> right No. Okay. So now that you've established yourself and you're, you're getting this, your phone isn't, it doesn't stop ringing. So like how many closings would you say you've received in total just from YouTube? And we've, we've done, I'd say probably a little over 40 since starting. Um, I think this year, you know, our fiscal year for our team ends in the end of April and we've broke 400 K in net G or net commissions. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe we can hit that half a million. We've got about 15 plus three appointments today. So 18 that are kind of in our pipeline right now that we're trying to put deals together for who uh, would like 18 deals in their pipeline right that are organic i want to i want to like really reiterate this we're talking about organic growth you make a video how long does it take you to make one of your videos about an hour an hour if i'm in the studio two hours i'm out in town do you then send it to a video editor or anything like that or is that it is it to like in total how long does it take yeah, I mean, you got, you're looking at, if you've got an editor, you're looking at maybe a, an hour to an hour and a half of getting it filmed. And then you've got to put it together for an editor. Like, you know, 
point one, point one B roll. Like you got to explain to the editor what you want because they probably don't live in your backyard. Like, yeah, you know, so you got to be able to break that down in a, a document of some kind and then send it off. Um, and it's on, it's on the YouTube. I mean, I did a long time where I was doing my own editing, where I was doing my own SEO because I know what people here want. I know what they're, they're looking for. Um, and I also kind of felt this need to earn privileges with it. Like I didn't just go out and buy myself a $7,000 camera because I want to start YouTube. Like I pulled out my phone and I just carried my phone around and then I bought a gimbal for my phone and then I had a balanced video and then I bought a drone, you know, I, I just. You just leveled up a little bit at a time as yeah. you were going through. Oh, that, that, so that means that anyone can do this with their phone anyone can learn how to edit it and do the seo and all of that and then grow from there just like you did yeah it's I mean, literally if, if my dumb ass can do it anybody can <laughs> i love it <laughs> i mean that's that's incredible so let's see so you've gotten you've gotten lots of closings from this um i want to open this up to the audience or anything that you want if anybody have questions like anything about any of the stuff that he's doing, how did you find your video editor? There you go. That's a good question. Uh, so a video editor through uh, Levi Lassick, who runs the uh, Passive Prospecting Program. He actually has a editing team, which you can basically just pay for like a done-for-you editing service. Um, and him and I have partnered up on quite a few things. So I uh, got a really good deal on an editor through him. And then his team handles all the, the junk, all of the you know, coordinating the editors, coordinating the thumbnails, like... To make my life really easy. But you were, you were, I saw you posted that you did like 694. What was it? Like 694? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a year free clip of B roll and just organized it for our editing team myself because I needed them to know what, okay, if I'm talking about downtown Tacoma, like don't put a clip up of Brown's Point. And yeah. so I went back and was just like, I need to like re realign these things um, for these editors because they don't live in my town. Yeah, like, so they're not putting up stupid content that doesn't match anything. And I've seen right. people do this with a hire an editor, and they're like, like they they shared a video clip of you know Asia, and I'm in San Diego. And like, well, did you tell them what you wanted? Like, did you tell them what you expected? And yeah. did they know? And so, I basically yesterday really just wanted to like make sure that it was super clear on what I say something, you know exactly where to go and to get it. And now that's all caught up. It's simple as when I upload new B-roll, I just put it in the appropriate folder. Um, but like most agents, what I do, I just like shot a bunch of content, dumped it into my Google Drive. And it was like, all right. There fun. you go. Yeah. Have fun. I like it. All right, Linda, you have a question for him? Uh, yeah, I have a couple like terms I, uh, that I just need a little bit more clarity on because I've gone to YouTube presentations and I'm, I think I know what they are, but maybe give me a little bit more insight like i keep hearing thumbnails you need to do a thumbnail is that is that just a picture lead into your video and then i have a two other ones so i just can i just do one at a time yeah that sounds great so my thumb the thumbnail is basically what you see when you go to the youtube channel so like right here where you see like nasty to come with cost like that is the thumbnail yeah and so you know the title says you know cost of living in 2024 can you afford to live here and it says like the nasty cost and it's like a scary face and money's running down. And so that is something that basically is like, oh, well, there's four other videos, but this one looks like I'm kind of intrigued. Like, what are these nasty costs that we need to know about? Okay. So the thumbnail is part of, you know, people are attracted by two things, by the title and by the, um, by the thumbnail. So getting those two down is really important. So the title, um, but it's like a, like a can't you create it like on Canva and then your video comes in right after that or no, the, the, the not on actually, the thumbnail's not actually seen in the video. It's just the cover up for the video. Like you ever when you go to Blockbuster and you'd like rent a movie and yeah. it was in the case and the picture on the front of the case, it's basically that for your, for your video. Okay. So then I just need to go on YouTube, just how to create a thumbnail for a YouTube video. Absolutely. Okay. All right. And my second question, and then I, I, I think these are short questions, and then I have one more. Um, SEO is just how you uh, 
keywords. So when people are searching you, it comes up. Is that what SEO is? Yeah, basically uh, that's search engine optimization. So that's creating your content in a way that whatever source you're looking for picks up on it. So in this case, um, you know, YouTube is owned by Google. So there's two things we're looking for. We're looking for YouTube to pick it up and recognize it as the top thing. And at the same time, we're also looking to get it placed on um, on Google as well. So making sure that you're using keywords that you you know you want. Like if I wanted to move to Charleston, South Carolina, in my video title, I might have moving to Charleston, South Carolina. And in my description, I might say, have you been thinking about moving to Charleston, South Carolina? And then when someone types in, moving to Charleston, South Carolina, Google's going to be like, oh, hold on. I actually know a video where someone's talking about this and boom, that pops up. So that's what your SEO is. Okay. And how many times a week do you post? And um, and with that, do you post like negative things about um, Tacoma? Like, oh, where not to go? I mean, we can't really, a real estate agent can't tell people where not to move. Don't go to this street. Oh. <laughs> uh, I I actually, I do have several negative videos. I've been beat over my head for them. I've had brokers call and be pissed at me about it um, because they had a client that's wanting to move there. And I have a video of like five reasons not to move there. And then they're getting grilled about why I'm putting this content out. But I think being really honest is super important. Um, I actually have a new video coming out that is literally like the worst, it's called like the worst things about living in Tacoma, Washington. Like there's no, like, and it is not one of those bait and switch. It kind of sucks. Like I'm putting it out and I'm like, Jesus, do I really want this out there? Um, but I'm going to do it. So yeah, I totally do. Um, I do negative content. I, I think that like, it's not to be negative, but it's to be honest. Like there are downsides wherever you live. So it's okay to talk about them. What was the other part of that? Um, how often do you post a week? Uh, twice a week in a live show on Thursday nights. There we go. Thank you so much. Okay, Anne, you had your hand up next, then we'll get to some of the questions in the um, comments. Austin, how are you? Um, Austin is my role model because I got my channel started like a month ago and Austin was so kind enough to talk to me about all the ins and outs before I got into it. And yes, I'm having like I live for these success stories and I often the stories like because I'm in my first month, I'm not having a ton of views or subscribers yet. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is a lot of work. So I kind of am living off these stories where people are like, oh, it took eight months. It took a year, you know, whatever. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Austin, do you so with the editors that you're using with Levi's, do you ever go back and like revamp their keywords or like their thumbnails? Like I, I don't really know uh, SEO stuff as well as I maybe should, but um, sometimes it always seems like I, some people I've heard are tweaking their, their keywords that the editors put out. Are you doing any of that? Are you going in behind them and kind of tweaking anything? Yeah. So I think with the, with, if you're going to hire an editor, tweaking them is, is a great idea. The problem what most people have is they will tweak them themselves. And what you need to do is you need to train your editor. So as opposed to just changing it, you need to go back to the editor and say, here's what you missed. Please update this and then send it back to me for another review. Even, so, even Levi's group who allegedly are trained. Yeah. I don't, do you, yeah, because I know, I know my market. I know my perfect client avatar. Like I know what I'm looking for. Um, so it's great that, that there are editors out there that have a really good baseline that know yeah. mostly what they're doing. Um, but if your perfect client is a first time home buyer in your market, that's completely different than my work from home tech employee soldier that makes, you know, that can buy an $800,000 house, has a family. Like I'm very granular on what I want. And so that message needs to be consistent through every video. Um, but yeah, I can go back and change it. But really what I'm trying to do is go back and educate them on what I'm looking for. And then, Hey, try it again, send it back to me. There you go. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. So Joe Hutchman in Sammamish said, what type of B-roll do you shoot photos or video? And are, is a, for B-roll video, how long are your B-roll clips? So, okay. So, um, I, I really hardly do any photos. 
because it's boring as hell. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to watch your, a slideshow. Um, so I do kind of a, a vlog style B roll where I'll do just clips of town with actually primarily my iPhone. And then I fly a ton with my drone. Um, B roll moves pretty quick inside of our videos. Like a lot of times when I'm doing B roll, I'll have music playing. And in that instance, it usually kind of changes with the beat or the flow of the music. But I would say like the same shot is on up more than probably seven to 10 seconds. Because people just get like, they get bored as hell. Like they'll watch my face for 15 minutes, but they'll only watch a flyover of town for about five seconds. <laughs> Good like, point. It's, it's weird, but over the last couple of years, like I found people are more open to watching my face than they are random clips of stuff. Interesting. That's good to know. Good to know. Um, okay, so Bill Fresanetti says, how much B-roll do you use in each video? Is there a formula every so many seconds or should there, or there should be B-roll or something like that? Yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily every few, not so much like a seconds thing. It's really a feelings thing. Um, like you'll go back and you'll watch your video and you'll be like, yeah, I, I, I need something else here. I'm drawing on too long. Like I've gotten to the point where I'll zoom my camera in, zoom my camera out. Um, I'll create any type of natural B roll that I can. Uh, it's not, not overwhelming. Like this is not, this is not TikTok. Like it doesn't have to go every five seconds. The attention span is longer on YouTube. Um, people are there in research mode. They're trying to learn something. Mm -hmm. If you're putting out good content, they're going to watch. Um, but I love B-roll. I think it's so cool to like show you exactly what I'm talking about. Like I have a huge passion for this. And so if I'm telling you about, you know, me and my kids going to Point Rustin for 4th of July, like I'm going to have like five or six clips of us down at Point Rustin on 4th of July. Because I want you to like pick up what I'm talking about. Yeah. Or telling a vision, a yeah. vision, right? So I love that. Um, last one from Bill, and then we'll go to Leah, and then I think we're all out of time. But you guys can all find him. My uh, team put his YouTube channel in the chat. So check it out. Follow him. Like him. He's he's one of my friends on Facebook. You can run him there, too. So um, what's your opinion about sharing your YouTube videos on social media? Have you done this? I've heard it will kill your analytics. That's a really good question. I want to know that, too. That's a great question. Um don't, don't share your videos on social media. Like again, it's, it's, you got to think about where people are at. Okay. So first of all, we're going to go over a few minutes, Sarah, cause that's just how that's, that's totally fine. Totally fine. Okay. So <laughs> if I'm, well, it kind of depends on your channel too. Like my channel is a relocation based channel. Okay. So let's put that out there. So yeah. if you live like Sarah lives closer to me, what motivation does Sarah have to watch a full vlog tour of a town that Sarah lives in? Like there is no motivation. So Sarah is going to click my video because she's my friend. She's going to watch it for 30 seconds and bounce off. Mm -hmm. okay. Couple of things. Now, Sarah's not logged into Google. So Google, YouTube doesn't know who's watching, which creates a problem for you. Your watch time is going to go to shit. And let's be honest, Sarah's not my client. My client is a relocation client that meets these criteria, this criteria, and this criteria. So I only want that video in front of those people. Now, um, so the, the short answer is no. I don't don't share your videos on social media. It's not it's it doesn't give you clout. Um, if you do want to share them, share them natively. Take the video file, upload it to Facebook. If you really just want to have that that ego fix where you feel good. Um, but do not share directly from YouTube. Like that's not changed at all. Yeah. Um, I, with our live show that we do on Thursdays, we do send out an email that invites uh, our database to watch our sphere of influence, to watch that. Um, but we do not share the video inside the email because again, the mindset, like, okay, you get a sales email, right? Like today, let's say, um, Lululemon sends you a, an email that they're going to have like 80% off of leggings or whatever it is you guys like. And you know, after three to four lines, you're bouncing off. Now imagine Lululemon sends the same email it's three to four lines. And there's a 17 minute video from Lululemon. Yeah. Like when you get your email, you're not in the mindset. You're not. No, no. Emails like, let me get through this. Right. right. 
I will I will caveat my my target audience is real estate agents. So I am going to share this video and the recording of it later on, just so you all know. So feel free to follow me as well. <laughs> all right. So on to Leah or Leah. I hope I said that right. Yes. Yep. You got it right. Thank you. Hey, Austin. Um, OK, so you actually brought up a couple of things. One, if you don't share. OK, so do you upload your YouTube videos to social media separate? and not share the link. I mean, I don't. I mean, you can, but I don't. Like, okay. It's just not- you just you just focus on just like people coming to YouTube and searching for Tacoma and that's how you get your traffic. Yeah, because that's who I want. Like, right. Okay. It, it's just, it's, and depend, like I said, depends on the channel that you're running, but like mine is relocation because that's what I want to do with them. And um, no one on my friends list is relocating. Now, on the upside is because I do talk about YouTube and things like that. Uh, I do get some a pretty decent amount of agent agent referrals from it, um, but that's not from agents watching my my YouTube content by any means either. Do you do any of your YouTube videos green screen? Or are you all just like sitting there in your office or out? Yeah, no, I I don't have a green screen. Like I, this sounds terrible because I actually watch a couple of guys that do some really good green screen videos. But I always just feel like they're kind of cheesy. They can be if they're not the right. If you don't have the right setup, I, I now I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, um, and I've seen some good green screen. And I've seen some not so good ones. But he literally, he, my office is right in front of the wall that's really pretty and painted in Sumner, which we could have done this in my office. But anyway, sure, yeah. um, once. It's the it's it says spread love in Sumner and you did a whole video in front of that mural and I was like wow that's awesome because it like anybody that knows Sumner is going to know that and see it and pull it up oh that's awesome he's right there he's walking through the streets of Tacoma talking about you know all the different areas and and stuff like that so I personally I think your style um you've you've really nailed it like and honed it your craft into what you're doing it's more of a vlog style i think and i love it um so i think it just depends on the on the agent and the person doing it so that's yeah i mean the the biggest pain point i had was like i had no idea like what these neighborhoods were like out here when i was moving so i flew out here like four different times I'm like that was so expensive and even now i still do encourage like our clients to set up a a trip out here so I can still only show you so much. Like you got to feel that's like your vibe or whatever. But if you're always sitting in a studio, like it's really hard to get down and show people what places are like. Obviously right now, like I get two hours of not rain and not dark. So I can try to get advantage of what I can. <laughs> but there are definitely more studio videos during this time of year. Gotcha. And then one last thing real fast. Um, what is your take on shorts? Do you think yeah. shorts hurt your channel? Do you think it helps? Yeah, let me ask you, let me ask you a question back. What would be the motivation in YouTube creating a option that would hurt your viewership? Right. I, I, well, I mean, I know that I've heard several different people have different views about their, about shorts, which is, I mean, everybody does, right? But I do know that, I mean, I could, I have my editor, she puts out some crazy shorts sometimes. And obviously people are attracted to anything with a cat screaming or a dog or whatever. But it does, for me, it has gotten me just a few more subscribers because there are crazy shorts out there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't do anything wrong with, with doing It's not my major focus, but I'm, I'm playing with a strategy right now myself. Okay. Thank you for your time. Yeah, man. All right. We got Anne and then we will wrap it up. Cool. Okay, going back to the whole don't post on social media, I knew that. But what about, you know, in the links? So, you know how like people go to my bio, like people always go to your bio. Do you put your YouTube channel link there or is that still kind of like you're not really getting the organic stuff or do you just post this is my YouTube channel? I mean, like in my page descriptions and stuff, I, I have it listed, um, but I don't have very much traffic from like Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. I think in the sense, like if you can share people the fact that you have a YouTube channel is good, especially when you're consumer facing, it's really more of if you're posting the, you know, the, the links directly in like, let's say Facebook, for example, you know, Meta wants to keep you on that platform. The last thing Meta wants to do is let you go somewhere else. So they're, they're going to already suppress that for what 
And then number two, it's not going to be the audience that you're looking for, which is another problem. So, um, as far as links go, you know, I do have it listed like on my digital business card, you know, place people that can find me, um, now on YouTube, by the way, the only link I have is free to book a zoom call with me. I'm not sending you by to Instagram. I'm not sending you by to Facebook, not to my website, nothing. Just book the damn zoom call. <laughs> and once we've eliminated that was, that was a big turner as far as, uh, income producing Sarah was, we realized people get a little screwy. So we eliminated options and it was, you can call me, you can email me or you can book this zoom call. Right. And once we did that, then it's like, it's just, you know, yesterday I was driving home from the office. That's like, Bloop. you know, so-and-so Alicia and her husband's name, but anyways, they're booked to call at 415 today. You know, they're wanting to move to Tacoma here in the next three months and they've got a house to sell. They need a referral. They need to find a loan officer. Like, uh, cool. Well, I guess I'm going to grab a referral. My wife's a lender here, so I'm probably going to nail that one, get a little income for myself, and I'm going to buy a house. I made money. I'll make money three different ways on the way home. And, uh, you know, come spinning off that real quick. You know, YouTube is like creating a little army of clones, right? Like, I made one video. Now there's one of Austin doing something. I make a video. Now there's two of me. Like, there's like 160 of me's prospecting at all times. Working for you 24-7, 365, as long as you wanted to, and nobody can do that. Nothing, can, you can't hire a VA, no, nothing can do what this does for you. No. And, it, and it also gets people to know, like, and trust you, and gives you authority and recognition in your market, which is so key, because now when you walk in to do a listing appointment, now they're already thinking that you know what you're talking about. Now you don't have to sit there and argue as much about price. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. I'm imagining that this is the case. No, yeah, I mean, walk in and they're like, well, why should we, you know, why should we hire you? Oh, I had 4 million impressions on YouTube this month. What other right. market has had 4 million eyes on anything? And that's from one platform. Here, let me show you my Facebook numbers and my Instagram numbers and TikTok numbers. And then it's like, Jesus, okay, fine, I give up. Yeah, uh, Mike grew up on that. <laughs> literally, like, I never said a time I'm dressed like this. Like, my biggest... This is relatable. Yeah, my biggest listing I took last year, I was in a Mariner's hoodie and gym shorts. And it was, like, damn near a million dollars. So, it kind of gives you a freedom of, like, you get to create, you know, your own your own brand. Yeah. Uh, here's one thing, though. I know I'm going over right here. Like, I could talk about this freaking hours. But I'll have you back. <laughs> yeah. On a final note, if you get into this... It's very easy to think that your town, the video is about, or your channel's about, it's about you. You're, you don't need the niche down because you're the brand. So showing who you are is what actually makes you the money. Like being yourself and putting that out there is wildly important. Like we've seen such a huge uptick in business since we got really great over this, and here is the here is the skill. Go to take your friends and say, write down the 10 things that you think about when you hear my name. Take those things and put them into a word bubble from all 10 people. Mm -hmm. And then pull out the top 10. And when you go film a video, hit all of those things. And it creates this consistent character inside of the video. And it's very subtle, but over time and over as you build out a, a catalog, it becomes uh, a lot more common. Like now people are, now I get people call me and they're like, bro, I love the new Jordans you're wearing in this video. It's because one thing people know is I'm a huge sneakerhead. Mm -hmm. uh, when I do my blog tours, I talk about things that are like, parks, skate parks, fun things to do with my kids because being a dad was a huge portion of um, what people recognize, like being an old punk rock kid. So I'm always talking about like music venues or places to go out and, you know, go to concerts. And as you go throughout building that catalog, those things will stand out in every way. And then you're also truly yourself. You're not pandering to anybody because here's the thing. You can fake it with a Zillow lead. Like you can, you can get on phone with Zillow and you can be Miss Prim and Proper and then show up in your finest dress or your finest suit, sell them a house, move on. 
But look, when you're in a six month relationship with somebody moving from Indiana, then they come out here three times and then they know nobody but you. If you're fake as hell, they're going to see it pretty quick. Right. Yeah. And I always tell people too, like, be who you are. Talk how you talk. Don't try to slow down. If you talk fast, talk fast. Right. Um, because they're going to they're going to notice those things are different if, once you're actually in front of them. Don't dress up in a different way or anything like that. So that's very, very good advice. And I thank you so much, Austin, for coming on. This was super short notice that we had for yeah. this. Thank God we can talk about it. You aren't like, let's talk about, you know, P&Ls or financial responsibility or anything that I have no experience in. Nah, I mean, you're the YouTube guy and like I I watch you from afar. I don't even think, you know, like I've told you maybe once or twice. I'm like, yeah, I use you as an example. So, so I love it. So keep it up. And thanks, guys, for being here and staying with us late. We, we kept the crowd. So I like that. And we'll see you guys next time. All right. Later, y'all. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.